Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back, Kellen here again with Droid Life. Got Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL in front of me here. We, we've we reviewed it, we've talked uh, first 10 things to do, unboxing, all that fun stuff. But what we want to do now is just give you the general tips and tricks. Well, actually, these aren't even general, these are tips and tricks to help you like really take your Pixel 3 experience to the next level. We do this with every phone, we got to do it here. Let's just do it. Pixel 3 and 3XL tips and tricks. Now I mentioned that first 10 things to do video. I'll, I'll link that down below, put it at the end of the video. You should go watch that if you haven't. It kind of walks you through what you should do the moment you get your phone out of the box and set it up. It goes through a whole bunch of the features from digital well-being and, and so on to, to, to really get you going in the right direction immediately. In this video, we're gonna talk about just some extra stuff, some maybe not necessarily advanced, maybe some stuff you didn't know about or just some some ways to do things faster. And, and, and so we're not gonna really double up. So again, go back and watch that video if you have not yet. With that said, we're gonna dive in and actually talk about one thing that you just need to make sure you're aware of, and that is the navigation system on this phone. So with the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL, Google is enabling the new gesture navigation out of the box. It's, I think, the only one you can use. I mean, I, I think there's like some workarounds to, to switch it back to the three button, but basically this is the navigation they want you to use. So how does it work? Again, we'll try to do this quickly. Uh, you have a pill down here. That is your home button. Tap on that uh, to launch Google Assistant. You can long press on that. It does that. Uh, if you're in an app, you just tap on that. It takes you back home. It, it works as a home button. Now, if you're in an app and you want to go back, you uh, tap on something, go to back screen, there's a little back button, tap on that, that takes you back. And then again, if I want to go home, I can go home. If I'm home and I want to get in my app drawer, I swipe up and I get into my app drawer. Now here's my app drawer, swipe back down and get back here. Now, if I'm in an app, I can also now swipe up and get into my app drawer, which is kind of a cool little trick. Uh, where this gets a little bit different is uh, if we do like sort of a mini swipe up, this is your app switcher. So you'll notice there is no app switcher button down here any longer. This is your app switcher. So. Again, a little mini swipe up gets me in there. Now I have these full cards and I can swipe over and go into uh, the next app, swipe up, go back an app uh, and scroll over here and you know maybe go to this app. So that's your app switcher now. So from home or within an app, you can swipe up and get into this app switcher. And then you have your back button and you can press that to go home. Okay, a couple more things though. If I swipe up here, and let's say I go into this app and I swipe up and I go into Twitter. Well, if I want to instantly get back to Chrome from Twitter, I can actually grab the little pill button and just swipe it to the right. And that'll take me back to my most recently used app. So you can see I can just kind of toggle between these two over and over. Let's say I have a whole bunch of apps open and I open one really early in the day and I want to go find it. I can actually grab this and hold on to it. And you can see I can scroll between all of the apps I actually have open that are in the app switcher and then settle on one if I want to. So that's another little trick there. That's how it works. So home, back, swipe up, swipe up again, or long swipe if you want to get into your app drawer. And uh, that's kind of how that works. Now, if you want to take things up another notch, you can actually swipe up into this screen and Google's letting you do some stuff from here. So let's say there's some text in here I want to copy. I can actually press and hold on text and it'll actually let me copy stuff. Um, you'll notice the little menu that pops up. I can copy, search, or share that to another app. Let's say I want to copy it, and uh, you know maybe I want to go over to Twitter and tweet something. So then I can actually long press, if it'll let me, and paste. And then I just pasted something that I copied from this little mini card screen. So kind of a cool little thing you can do is there is long press on things. And I believe you can do it with images too. You can at least share them, not necessarily copy them, but I could click share and then share that image to another app. So you can do copy and pasting of text and also sharing of images from this preview screen which is kind of cool. Uh, so a couple more things though in here, uh, let's say you want to go into a multi-window experience. So how do you, you used to do that by like long pressing on the app switcher or, or something along those lines or grabbing an app and kind of dragging it to the top or something like that. So now when you're in this screen, you actually tap on the little app icon up to the top there and you get two new options. Uh, one is just app info. So this is an easy way to get into an app info screen if you need to uninstall an app, force stop something, uh, 
you know, adjust its notifications or, you know, look at the version number or something like that. You can do that from there. So again, that was just tapping on that and you get info or split screen and that's how you get into split screen. So you tap on that, tap split screen. It puts that app into split screen and lets you choose your next app. And now you have two apps in a multi sort of window situation. You can scroll around and move these up or down to adjust, uh, to get out. You just swipe one of them all the way up from that, that sort of divider bar. And that's kind of it. So new navigation has changed. You got at home and back you swipe up to get an app switcher if you need multi window you tap on this to get into split screen you can copy and paste things from these screens as well kind of some cool tricks there's a lot going on in there so just kind of make sure you're familiar with all that from there let's go ahead and talk about the squeezy sides or active edge as google calls it so with the pixel 3 and 3xl just like the 2 and 2xl you can squeeze the side of the phone it'll open up google assistant so you squeeze that open assistant you see that uh to get in there we go into settings and, and you may actually walk through this during your initial setup but we go all the way down to system gestures and uh, active edge is what it's called. So in here, you can adjust the sensitivity uh, in order to launch that. And, and the reason I'm showing you this is because it really is a really fantastic way to open Google Assistant. You don't have to shout the okay hot word or hey hot word at your phone. Uh, you can just squeeze it and then ask it to do whatever you want. So you can turn it off if you want. That's actually where the option is there. So now if I squeeze this, uh, it shouldn't do anything. And I squeeze that and I get no vibration at all back. So that does actually turn it all the way off. You can add, decide whether you want to allow it to work when the screen is off. Um, and you can also squeeze it to silence incoming calls. That's something I typically forget, but if you do have calls coming in and they're blowing up the spot, you can uh, you can squeeze and that, that'll quickly silence it. So anyway, you should set that up because Google Assistant, there's, there's a lot of stuff you can do there. Uh, here are 10 commands you could do with the Google Assistant. Show me Portland traffic. Add beer to my shopping list. Okay, I've added beer to your shopping list. Remind me to buy beer when I get to work. Sure, I'll remind you when you get to work. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Starting. What's the temperature in my house? It's currently 68 degrees, and heat cool mode is set to keep the temperature between 65 and 75 degrees. Is the front door locked? When's the next Blazers game? The Blazers next game is today at 4 p.m. where they will play the Pacers. Wake me up at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Setting your alarm. Play my new albums playlist. Sure, playing your Spotify playlist called New Albums. Hopefully those help you get a uh, quick start to using Google Assistant more often. Uh, now that we're moving on to the camera, so Tip here, quickest way to open is double tap on power button. That opens the camera. It's just the fastest way because you can do it from any screen and also when uh, the screen is off. You just double tap, launches that. Again, fastest way. The fastest way to switch to selfie mode, well, there is a selfie there, but let's say you only have one hand available. You can just do this little wrist flip and then it actually flips over to selfie mode. So a little flip again, goes back. So you can just kind of do that and it'll go back and forth. So quick way to do that. And in terms of general navigation, um, this camera now has a sort of swipe to get to different modes. So over here is panorama mode and there's portrait and you can tap on these two and you can actually swipe on the screen back and forth and that'll get you to those different camera modes as well. Um, if we tap over to more, this is where you get some more settings. Uh, there's a Google lens shortcut playground mode, which is AR stuff, photosphere, which is kind of the 360 degree uh, photos you can take. And that's been on Google phones forever. Photo booth is uh, make funny faces and it'll snap a bunch of photos. It's kind of silly, um, but you do have settings in here. So if we go into settings, a couple of things you may want to make sure you tweak. Uh, well, I always put a grid on. Um, so three by three, you can put whatever kind of grid you want on there. Uh, if we go into advanced, this is kind of up to you, depending on what kind of photographer you want to be. HDR plus control, you can have that set to uh, a little more manual control. If you have this off, it just kind of uses it whenever it thinks you should use it. You should you should probably leave that on. Here's if you want to take uh, photos in RAW plus JPEG. Um, let's go back here though. Uh, so camera resolution, I would just leave it at four by three and 12.2 megapixels. That's the biggest you're gonna get. Uh, and four by three is a more traditional photo setup rather than 16 by nine, but you 
take whatever kind of photos you want. This is where you'll find that setting though. Um, in video, uh, this phone only shoots 4K at up to 30 frames per second, not 60 frames per second, which we're seeing from most phones these days. Uh, you may as well set it to 4K though at 30 frames per second in case you, you know you want to downgrade video or just to make sure you get that highest quality. Uh, video stabilization, make sure you leave that on to really reduce that shaky hand effect. Uh, that's pretty much it for navigating. Um, I did want to share a little bit on Google, or I'm sorry, Google Lens though. So Google Lens is built in and with the Pixel 3, it's actually much smarter than other uh, Pixel phones have been in the past. So when you open up your camera, let's say you have a business card in front of you or phone number or something like that. So if you put the camera up to it, and I actually just have an email address there. So if I put that up there, you can see it's automatically recognizing that there's an email address there and it's giving me the option at the bottom to uh, tap on that and then email that person because it recognizes it's an email. So it'll do this with phone numbers and things like that too. And again, I didn't fire up lens at all. It just smartly recognized that. Um, the other thing you can do though, is if you want to just fire up lens manually uh, with this phone, you can just long press on the camera and then it actually opens up the whole lens experience. So lens is, it'll help you translate things, uh, find text, copy it, create contacts, um, contact people like I just showed you there, discover landmarks, uh, look up just images on the internet in general, things like that. And if you actually swipe up on this, it'll tell you more. So copying text, searching for similar products, identifying plants and animals, discovering books and media, and you can actually scan QR codes too. So that's how you get into lens. Um, you can also just go over here to more and there's a lens section. But again, if you're just in the camera and you want to quickly fire up lens, you just long press on the screen there and it fires up lens. So the next thing I'm going to show you is night sight. Uh, so night sight is still not officially available at the time of this, of this video, the time I'm filming this. So night sight is Google's camera mode that takes incredible nighttime or dark situation photos. Uh, thankfully there is a hacked together version of the camera that enables it. And by the time you watch this, Google may have rolled this out. Uh, but so night sight is something you're going to want to use and it's going to blow away any other camera, smartphone camera you've used before, but you you can see it over here in this more section and here is night mode. So you, you take pictures in dimly lit situations. And as you do that, it says hold still and it kind of processes and it'll say like gathering as much light as we can. And depending on the lighting situation, it could take, you know, five seconds for that whole process to complete. It was pretty quick there. Cause I, obviously I have the nice lighting in here. Um, so what it'll do, and I'm going to show these right now on the screen, you can see the comparison on the left, we have photos that were taken without night sight. And then on the right are the photos that were taken with night sight. And th these are incredible results. We're talking some situations where it's barely lit at all, where my eyes can barely manage anything. And this camera seems to be pulling in light. So once this update rolls out, you are going to want to use the night mode, especially whenever you're in a dark situation. It is absolutely incredible stuff. Moving right along here, let's jump into settings and we're actually going to go into sound. So one of the things Google introduced with the Pixel 2 and 2XL is this really fun thing called Now Playing. So what Now Playing does is on your on your lock screen, it shows you if there's music playing in the background, if it can recognize that, it'll tell you who the person or who the artist is, what the song is. And then, you know, you can go find that and buy it or whatever you want to do. And it's super handy because how many times have you been in a situation where you want to know what song's playing in the background? Um, what they've done here though, and, and again, I found that in sound settings, you can turn it on here if you want to, if, you, if you're, if it's not on right now, um, but they've added a now playing history. So there used to be apps that did this, um, but now there's actually just full on history back here. So it'll show you what you've been listening to or what you've been hearing in the background, even if you didn't really realize it. Um, and there's, there's a history of, and you can actually add a shortcut to your home screen. So if I say yes up here, um, It'll add a shortcut. And then from my home screen, if I've been listening to music or maybe at the end of the day, if I know that I've heard a lot of music and I want to go check back and see what's been playing, I just tap on that and now it'll show that to me. So again, that's in sound settings. Now playing just one of those cool things that Pixel phones do these days. Um, so now just a, a couple of other tips here. So if I go into settings again and go down to system, um, and advanced and reset options. This is something I don't think a lot of people know, but if you don't ever want to fully factory reset your phone, but you're having just connectivity issues, whether that be on Wi-Fi over Bluetooth or with your mobile network, there is actually a reset Wi-Fi mobile and Bluetooth option. And if you go ahead and tap that, um, you can go ahead and reset all of those settings. 
and and then it'll kind of start you fresh. So without fully resetting your entire phone, it's kind of a good way if you're ever having just, again, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or mobile connectivity issues, kind of wiping those clean and starting back over. Just keep in mind that that will wipe out any Bluetooth pairings or anything like that, so you have to repair stuff. But it's just kind of one of those things you should, you should be aware of there. All right, so let's go back here, and uh, I'm actually going to go into the app section. And so in the app section, what I'm looking for is actually notifications. Well, th there's actually a couple things I want to talk about here. So uh, for one, if you go into settings, apps, and notifications, there's there's some nice things to look for in here. Uh, Google now shows you your most recently used apps. So if you know, you've been having trouble with an issue with an app or something like that, and you want to go in and find that quickly, they actually are showing you the, the ones you've used most recently. Um, what I'd also show you is in this advanced section down here, this is where your default apps are. So let's say you have Chrome and Chrome beta, or you install a third party camera app or a new messaging app or something like that. And you set it as the default and realize that maybe you didn't want to do that to go in and clear those out. This is where you find those. So you can choose a default browser, a default home in case you're not using the pixel launcher and maybe using a third party launcher like Nova launcher. This is where you could change your phone app or your text messaging app. This is also where you find Google pay stuff. Um, but you can also, let's say you just don't want to use Google assistant. This is actually where you can go ahead and turn that off. Or maybe you want to use Alexa, Amazon's Alexa or something like that. But again, that was in uh, apps, default apps, and then up here, assistant and voice. And then you can go in and turn that off. And then Google Assistant won't be there in case it's bugging you and you're squeezing your phone. You don't want it to do that sort of stuff. Uh, there's some other controls in here. There's also another shortcut to active edge in there. Um, but back on the notification thing. So if I go back here, um, notifications right here, if you tap on this, this will actually tell you um, all of the controls controls you have over your notifications, which are, you know, these are important things. If you don't want notifications all the time, like let's say you're getting notifications from your clock app, or maybe there's a game that keeps popping up and bugging you. This is where you can turn them off. And this will show you sort of like recent apps. It shows you recently sent notifications through apps. So you can go in and just toggle these off. Now the phone won't send me notifications any longer. Um, you can also go see from the last seven days what's been sending you notifications. And once this loads, you could really just scroll through this whole thing and just start turning things off if you don't want notifications from them. I'd also show you that if you have a notification and it's something, again, like a game that's bugging you, you can always long press on that notification and just say, stop showing me those notifications from that app. And then it'll stop that. And then if you want those to come back at some point, you will find those in here. All right, so the final tip I wanna show you is the screen call feature. So in case you didn't know this, Google's phone now has built-in screen caller. So when you get those spam calls, you can actually screen them. So when the spam calls are calling you, you can kind of troll them back a little bit with this own built-in screen call feature. And I'll show you how it works. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna place a call to myself. And as I do this, you will notice uh, a, a, a specific screen pops up that uh, lets me do a little bit more. So call should be coming in here. You can see it coming in right there. See that button right there? It says screen call. So if I press that button, it will actually allow me to screen it with Google Assistant. So if I tap that, you'll see the person calling is now getting this message from Google. It says, look, you're calling using a screening. This person is screening you with Google. Uh, please say your name while you're calling. So if I say, hey, it's Kellen, please answer the phone. I'm assuming that person would say that on the other end, right? It's still listening to me. Uh, then I could say, ah, tell me more. I don't, you know, I don't know who you are. And so Google's going to say, just so we're clear, go ahead and say more. And then the person can say like what the reason is they're, they're calling you and that sort of thing. And then you get to decide. You can report it as spam. And I know it's just continuing to do this. Try to ignore that. Uh, you could report it as spam if it is indeed a spam call. Uh, you, can ha you could answer it just by tapping on that button. You could hang up on them. There's some more options here. Like who is this? I can't understand and, and and call me back whatever you could there's some messages built in there so it's it's a heck of a feature and like I said with all the spam calls we're getting these days it's uh it's doing a pretty good job of kind of trolling them back a little bit I've had a number of them just hang up on me because they're not sure what to do anyway uh yeah I could tap that and go uh jump right into the call and now I'm talking to the person you can kind of hear it replaying back but so screen call it's in your phone settings turn it on. It is a heck of a feature. Anyway, that's been uh, Pixel 3, 3XL tips and tricks. You notice I did all of that on the Pixel 3XL. All of that stuff is right there on the Pixel 3 as well. If you guys have com comments, questions, uh, let us know. We're Droid Life. Peace.